Well, hey there, space engineers. Uh, this is Expressman, and we are going to have a quick video, uh, maybe not super quick, but not super long either, on the uh, process of setting up Path Auto Miner. So in Space Engineers, particularly lately in my faction, PSI, my corporation, whatever you want to call it, uh, there is uh, a lot of big projects going on. In these big projects, we use a lot of resources. In these years, I do these resources. We need lots of components. For lots of components, we need lots of ores. That is where automatic mining comes in. It saves so much time because it mines for you while you do other things, like usually setting up other miners. So, uh, I'm going to both show you general use of PAM, the Path Auto Mining Script, as well as specifically introduce you to Debbie Downer, our newest fleet standard issue vertical miner. How to set up a new one, as well as how to operate it. So, let's get right into it. Um, so, uh, Path Auto Miner, uh, just like any script, you got to go to the Steam Workshop. Uh, you can filter by scripts and search that term, PAM or Path Auto Miner. And uh, you can add the scripts to your uh, subscription list. And you're good to go in that regards. Um, what I'm going to actually do first is show you how to use it, and then I'm going to show you how to set up a new one. In most cases, you guys will be grabbing one that's already set up for you because I'm just that kind of guy, but there will be situations, whether you're on a server or whether I'm unavailable or what have you, that you'll want to uh, print up and configure your own. Uh, so let me get right to it. This is Debbie Downer. Why is she named Debbie Downer? Well, she is a vertical miner, and uh, Debbie works really well with Pam. So, uh, I call her the uh, vertical miner uh, D9SG, meaning she's got nine drills in the small grid. Um, so this one's freshly printed, new off the presses, uh, reflects a couple design changes that I've been working on. Uh, it is hydrogen powered in its entirety. Uh, it does have two large batteries in order to support uh, the drills. Um, has a lot of systems that I consider standard uh, on any good ship. Uh, for example, she has an internal reactor as her main power generator, but also this red unit here is an emergency kick reactor that doesn't require conduit if you find yourself where she is completely dead and out of power. You can stuff a little uranium in there. I guess I am going in to set up, aren't I? Uh, but this helps you understand what's going on. Uh, here are the two batteries. There is the uh, programmable unit. I just keep wanting to call it a computer. Uh, on the back is the emergency light up the projector button. If you find yourself shot up or crashed and missing pieces and you need to reproject them, that projector is located down here on the bottom between the grinders, as is the uh, sensor that you don't have to really worry about, but it's good to know it exists. Um, being a miner, there are ejectors for unwanted minerals. Uh, there used to be a gun, as you can see on the old model. However, I removed the gun because its ammo is considered unremovable storage items, and I kept getting a message that uh, it kept failing to depart because it thought it was failing to empty. Uh, when in fact, it, well, it just had ammo that couldn't be emptied. Um, the, uh, obviously it has, you know, other standard features, got an ore detector, uh, as you can see there. Um, pretty good carrying capacity for its size, uh, because there are, uh, four, uh, small cargo container, I guess medium cargo containers in there. There are also four uh, small grid large thrusters, and what this does is it enables her to carry uh, damn near her entire capacity. And uh, Path Auto Miner, once you reach a, a dangerous weight, uh, it will return to station, even if that means your cargo containers are only slightly full. So in very many ways, thrust is actually a determining factor in your cargo capacity with Path Auto Miner. Therefore, this thing being a little overpowered actually enables it to uh, hold a decent amount for its size. 
so uh yeah I, you know what? i'm going to reverse what i said let's configure this one and then i will get into use if you only want to get into use skip ahead a little bit or watch because i am entertaining and delightful so uh this is a dead unit right now it's just got the basic battery power that comes from creating the new batteries it's still attached to its printer umbilical cord so uh, let us grab some ice and some uranium now the uranium is optional there is enough power of course since it is a hydrogen ship to get it to a connector and then charge the batteries in full and that is adequate actually in most cases particularly if you're working very close to your base um, however, oh, I don't need all this stuff, rats, hang on, um, however, uh, I, I like that extra security you get with having some uranium around, and, um, there we go, that's a good amount, so this server is running a 4x inventory, uh, and 10x hydrogen efficiency. And I'm a big believer in either having 6, 8, or 10x hydrogen efficiency on a server, otherwise it's pretty dumb. So I'm just gonna throw those in the connector. I could actually bother to throw them actually in the reactor and in the H2 generator. Um, but in fact, I might actually throw this in the reactor because the station will try to suck it out. Where is the reactor? Uh, there we go. Station will try to suck it out, so don't want that to happen. Uh, so now it is generating hydrogen for the ice. It is charging the batteries, and we're pretty much safe to move it at this point. So uh, we're going to nip her off her printing stand and jump in the cab. Uh, now, if you need to, you need to load the Path Auto Mining script. This seems to remember that you have it, so it just works. But if you do need to, of course, press K, go to Control Panel, go down to, oh boy, what happened? Oh, okay, I see what happened there. So I do use the Shield Generator mod, and if you don't have that mod, you'll just get what I see, what you see here, which is you know incomplete. Uh, I just need to tell it to um, print a couple of those shield wafers and it will load up just fine with build and repair, but good to notice. Um, programmable, P is before S, there we go. Um, so of course with the prim programmable block, you would hit edit, you would hit browse scripts, you have your list of scripts, you'd go to pan path auto miner, you would click copy to editor, you would click check code, you would see, hopefully, A, waiting for it, successful compilation. Sometimes errors okay as long as they're warnings and not like a fatal error or something like that. Um, so then we say okay again. Don't need to do any further configuration. Um, that's already done. The panels are labeled properly, et cetera, et cetera. So that's cool. Um, and uh, I see I have one button broken there, but I don't remember what it is. Uh, so actually what I did uh, because there are a lot of buttons here is I actually put the computer controls on the second control block so control 2 and you can see now the thing is when you, when you set up path auto miner and basically when you set up particular um, specific control commands for any script you know what you're doing is popping in the G menu you're going into the programmable block you drag the programmable block down to a spot you click run and it's like one run what because you have to give it a command and you would enter a command in here and then click confirm and it's done uh, annoyingly unlike the button panel there's no hint as to what oh yeah, yeah see even when I hover there's no hint as to what you actually made it that's something keen really needs to fix um, but they have not so um, I have a standard that I memorize and you are welcome to change it and make it your own unless you work in PSI then you have to do this standard sorry you're stuck uh, and that is uh, up one is up two is apply three is down that's mainly what you need up apply down and then eight and nine eight is start nine is align and we'll go over what those mean later but you can see um, I hope you can see I can't actually zoom very well um, use high def when you watch this video 
uh, that we have uh, record path and set home, set up mining job, continue job, blah, 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 blah. Now, the very first time we use PAM on a newly minted ship, and you know what, let's go connect to a connector so I'm not just floating out here in the wild blue. Um, do, 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 do. Parking lot's a little full. This base is, I don't want to say old, but it's not new either. All right, let's go click on the connector there, and I gotta go to menu one, and whoop, that was dumb. Let's hit the connector button, not the engine off button. Okie dokie, don't mind that horrible, ugly ship. I would burn it to the ground. Um, so, uh, back to the cockpit, or the cab, or the flight deck, whatever you want to call it. Um, we have to do a little configuration. This is a one-time thing. So let's go back to my uh, number two menu, uh, and then we are going to go down to behavior settings. So I'm tapping 3333, which is down, 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 down. Behavior settings, tap two, because that's you know the activate button. Uh, and then we get a submenu here, and we see things like max load, weight limit, uh, ejection. Now, because if you want everything, if you want to keep the stone, you turn ejection, you just leave it the way it is. Uh, but if you want to poop out the stone and keep, you know, all the other, other minerals, uh, which I am to that stage right now, I'm actually going to pop that, that two button, the select button, and it says ejection current something stone. So we're good. That's actually what we want. Uh, all this does is when it gets super full of stone, it pauses the drill job and waits to give the ejectors time to catch up. Now, you think that you'd want to toggle sorters on at this point. You actually don't. Leave that alone. There's no reason to ever touch that. One more thing we need to change, uh, unload ice is on. That's a good one to be aware of, but we don't need to mess with it. Uh, but uranium, minimum five kilograms. Now, you just saw me throw more than five in there. However, there are two reactors. So this thing, if you were to try to run it, would go home and throw an error that you have an underfilled reactor because the second reactor is empty. Well, I'm not gonna put five kilograms in both reactors. I just wanna use my main reactor most of the time and the emergency kick reactor is the emergency kick reactor. So I could turn that reactor off and it would be a non-issue, but what I can also do, because the batteries really are pretty much sufficient enough and the reactor is really a comfort blanket for me, I'm going to uh, hit my select button a couple times and it will cycle until it says ignore, uranium ignore, and that's what I want. Uh, you can, if you're doing sort of longish range stuff, uh, battery minimum 20, that's the, the bat, you know, if the charge gets below 20%, it'll run home no matter what stage it's at. Um, that is worth bumping up to maybe 30 uh, if you're doing long distance stuff and don't have a reactor. Um, but, you know, if you're keeping it within two or three kilometers and especially if you have a reactor, that 20% is plenty fine. Hydrogen minimum 20%, I've never had to mess with that either. When done, return home on damage, return home, and there's some advanced features. You don't need to mess with any of that. So basically all we changed was uh, uranium ignore and uh, toggle uh, the ejectors to stone. Um, by default, those ejectors will be uh, set to pull and filter out stone. Again, if you are maybe early game and you're trying to keep the stone for the resources, you actually have to do the regular thing in the key, uh, uh, key menu. Um, pull up the sorters. Of course, we're getting the whole base now. Um, but pull up the PAM conveyor sorters and um, either you know toggle those things off. You can. Uh, there probably even should be uh, a G menu item for that. I can do that. <coughs> uh, I, I will be releasing this uh, on the Steam Workshop very soon, so look for the PSI Vertical PAM Miner D9SG. All right, so um, the way I configure this, uh, you can see in the bottom corner, uh, hydrogen is 100%. So that is sweet. We're pretty much ready to go now. So I'm going to pop the two to go back in the menu. I'm going to pop one a few times because that's up and go to uh, the operations. Here's the operations part. The initial setup is done. Uh, and because the way I configured my connectors, actually, let me, let me mention that really quick because it's rather important. Uh, the way I configured my connector, it actually topped it up on ice um, while we were sitting here. So um, you could just run a simple uh, drain all sorter out, but uh, from time to time, you will manually have to put ice in it to refill the um, H2O2 thing. Uh, what I prefer to do is run two, um, can't really see it very well here, you can see it over here. Uh, I prefer to run a dual sorter system. So sorter out is, let's see what it's currently set to. Sorter out uh, is set to uh, drain all, 
blacklist none. And that just means pull everything, including ice. Pull everything. Um, and I'm okay with that. Um, actually, very often I will say um, ignore ice. I probably should do that right now. Uh, if I'm harvesting ice, obviously I need to pull ice off that list. Um, but when I'm not harvesting ice, I can go ahead and blacklist ice so that it doesn't pull. Now the, the put or the return side um, allows the path auto miner to access the inventory of the base. So I'm going to press K on this guy. And notice drain all is, is turned off because we only want to pull what the path, path auto, uh, what, what the, um, sorry, what Debbie asks for. Uh, and we're actually set to whitelist ice. So Debbie can only pull ice. Um, th in this manner, with this dual uh, sorter setup system, my auto miners can top up their ice every single time they return home. Uh, there are uh, numerous uh, small grid, small hydrogen tanks, uh, quite a few of them actually, um, but I don't re recommend relying on them. They don't last a super long time, particularly since, as I explained, this thruster configuration is a bit on the strong side. Uh, you can get away with it a little bit, but I would only do it immediately around your base. So let's go mine a site. Uh, what we want to do, and this is the normal operations you would do when they're already configured, is we're going to pop the number two for this record and set path and set home button. But we want to be connected to the connector we want to end on when we do this. It's very important because it takes the orientation, the connector, everything. Uh, now I'm going to switch to my outside view. Um, disconnect. Well, I'm gonna, so at this point, it's recording everything we do, and it's not going to do like burst for burst the same thrust, but it will do the exact path with some degree of precision. Now I've got another auto miner, my actually my horizontal one you can see is coming in for landing right now, and I have a personal matrix of rules I have for flight paths that keep these things from colliding with each other. Notice it made a very high approach, so I designated my horizontal ship as a high approach from the north west that's not the northwest whatever um, so what I'm gonna do because of that is I'm gonna take a low low level exit out of here and I'm also trying to remember where my um, it's a good idea to know exactly where you're going and use like GPS but I'm trying to keep the screen uncluttered for this beautiful video and not use GPS so um, it's a good idea to not go fishing around with this unit Ah, oh, this is where I wanted to be um, because it will record that fishing around too so this is where I want to be. Uh, when you get to the site, you pull up to the general spot. And then you stop. You don't want to pull up to your exact work site. You want to pull up to the general area, but pretty close. This is the, the travel portion, and it kind of uses different rules in terms of navigation. Um, this part is so specific, though, and so precise that if you have an asteroid with caves, um, you can actually pick and nimble your way through those caves, and it will remember within a tolerance of a couple meters. Um, similarly, if your, um, let's say your connector port uh, for the, the miner is deep inside some big base with like, you know, corridors and stuff like that, you can record it, you know, flying through your base, and it will, again, within a couple meters of tolerance, fly exactly that path. That's what makes it the path auto miner. Um, okay, so this is where it gets a little wild westy. So let me pop V, go inside, um, go to my command menu here, and I'm going to pop the number two, the activate button to stop the recording. And I'm gonna push three for down so that I'm at set up mining job, and I'm gonna pop two to select that. Now, um, mercifully, you can see um, that the boundary automatically appeared. Um, very often this does not happen, so what you have to do is go into K menu. This is always confusing to people. Go to the Info tab. In the Info tab, it says Show Sensors Field Range. The sensor actually doesn't provide any navigational function in this particular script. What the sensor does is what you see here. It projects the dig zone. And because the sensor is buried up inside those uh, drills a little bit, that's why the, the zone is up inside the drills a little bit. So you kind of have to, you know, make a little bit of a mental adjustment there. 
So um, this is a deep but small-ish area. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show mainly for the guys uh, my best practice here, which is I'm going to grab my drill. And kind of in the middle of this area, I believe, is a sort of a multi-level. I don't know. Oh, it's because I have my H off. There's sort of a multi-level mineral thing going on here, I think. 30 and then 16. So uh, I'm going to uh, just uh, crouch, do the right click, uh, remove material thing, and L for my lights on. We're just going to go straight down. And there is the silicone. But we're going to keep going because hopefully straight below it is, yeah, the magnesium. I feel like I kind of clipped both of them. Yeah, I did. All right, so now I'm gonna fly up to just under the magnesium and I'm gonna hit enter for the chat box. And I'm gonna type slash GPS, lowercase, uppercase doesn't work. Um, mine bottom doesn't matter. What I'm doing is just creating a quick reference and then I will fly to what I consider my sensor's height above the dirt and I can see 32.6. So let's just call it 33. That gives me a very accurate depth. Now keep in mind, you know, the minerals itself themselves shift up and down, particularly if they're part of a hill. Um, so that's only an accurate depth for that precise spot. So now I'm gonna motor over here. And what the ship is gonna do is it's gonna basically extrapolate a sort of direct path between that spot I just left where I stopped recording and the work spot. But the work spot, of course, changes because this is a zone. So back inside the ship, uh, we're going to change the particulars a little bit. Pop three to go down. And uh, with this three, let's, uh, let's hit, pop that up to four. Uh, we could hit minus if we want to reduce it. Uh, height, let's uh, match it so that they're the same width and height. Uh, depth, 30 meters. Remember I said 32, 33. So let's add one to the, oops, let's add one to the depth. It says 32. Let's add two to the depth. It might be overkill, but... I'd rather not leave material behind. Uh, and then down at the bottom, it says start past top left. So it'll go to the top left of the square to do the first dig. I kind of like it start in the middle, um, particularly when I'm in space and I'm mining an asteroid bloom, then the middle has a lot more value than the edge. Um, so I actually like to uh, pop the selector here and change the start pass to center. And I can pop one to go back to the top of the menu and see it says start new job. I'm not gonna hit that yet, but I'm just preparing my, my cursor. I'm gonna go back to the outside view. And first of all, because I don't actually know if I'm level, um, I'm gonna pop the nine key, which commands the script to level. So now I am perfectly level to the planet's gravity. This does not work in zero gravity situations. It only works where there is gravity. So now I know I'm perfectly level and I'm looking at the shortest part of the hill there to make sure I have clearance. You see where that box closes up on that left side? It looks like I'm high enough. If I, could, I could go lower, but there's a chance that when it goes to drill there, it'll actually catch on the hill and do some funky bad things. So I'm just gonna call that good. I know I gave myself a little bit of leeway on the height, so I'm gonna call that good. And I remember that I queued myself at job ready, so I'm just gonna pop the two key and it's gonna start going. Um, Let's see, the ejectors are working. Uh, the first hole's always a little terrible because the ejectors will put the material right back down into your drills. And it might be slightly slower going uh, because you're gonna fill up with rock really fast. You'll do a couple ejection scenarios. Now, this server has the default uh, delete entities when there are 20 or more. So as these ejectors uh, shoot things out, um, some of this will be server deleted, and particularly when it stops to do an emptying cycle, quite a lot gets deleted, um, which is a good thing because we're trying to clear this stuff out. Now, again, if you're early game and all of this stuff has value to you, you can shut all this off. It'll keep it and it'll deliver it to your base. Um, so that's kind of it. Um, I'm going to, let's see here. Um, I'm in, am I inside it or am I flying? I'm inside. Hi there. Um, is there come out a little hole over here? This is kind of cool. Can, oh, I'm just just missing that uh, silicon mineral. That's fantastic. So you can you can and I'll show you this in a minute. You can actually we'll do this when it hits the bottom. You can actually adjust some of these parameters without uh, retraining the whole site. 
Uh, here is an example of it stopping. Uh, it probably hit about 520,000 kilograms, and but it knows it has a lot of rock because of that setting that we did and set up. So it's just going to sit here and wait, thankfully, with the drills off. And as I said, the server will keep knocking it out. Plus, this hole I have here actually acts as a nice escape for it. Um, eventually, as this hole gets bigger and bigger, it'll be easier for these rocks to escape without recycling into the system. Again, the first hole is a little rough. But yes, I've seen this happen before where, where it actually goes into my pilot hole, which is a riot. Um, I'm going to pop some music here, but uh, I'll show you how to adjust this in just a moment here. Uh, it, won't, it won't pause for very long. What do we have for music anyway? do that. Um, these are nice though when you get multiple minerals on one drop. That's not always the case. Alright, so it's unloaded probably down to below 300,000k. Um, again, this will be less frequent when it has a better way for the excess to fall clear. Uh, the first hole is just, it's just always the first. That sweet, sweet cobalt. Now, if at any point it jams up and that happens sometimes, I think it's a glitch. I see usually a little dark piece of rock that almost looks burnt. Uh, it will back up and reattempt and back up and reattempt very patiently. Uh, and usually at some point prevail, but I can come through here if I see it stuck and do a little right click thing, nuke that little spot that it's hung up on, and it seems to continue just fine. Um, but it also seems to clear itself up given enough time. And I believe it reached the actual bottom. I don't think it's full here. And so it's backing off to pilot the next hole. And you can see, thankfully, in the meantime, it is kicking out a lot of rock. Yep, it's just repositioning the next spot and getting hit by these things. Run! All right. Whoa. Okay. So there it goes down on the next hole. Now, it's the, let's say I was, like, really wrong about this and it went way, way deep, right? And we're like, this isn't good. Or, a very often happens, it doesn't go deep enough. And we're like, hey, we're, we're not getting some, like, easy mineral right there. That's actually a pretty good depth. It's not something I would typically change very much. I could back it off one. I wouldn't usually nitpick that much, but this is an educational experience, so let's do that. So we go back in here, and what we have to do is pop that two key to tell it to stop. And then, this is a counterintuitive, but we have to pop the two key to go into set up mining job. Now we can go down to the depth, hit depth minus, bring that back to 32. Uh, and now we hit change current job, continue job. And it'll keep drilling. And we'll see. Nice. Did the wrong push the wrong button. Uh, we'll see it'll actually uh, stop two meters shorter than previous. Um, and in this way, you can make some depth tweaks. Um, but again, keep in mind, as the ground has topography, uh, very often the mineral does. And sometimes the mineral has some topography shift even when the ground does not. So it's kind of the wild west down there. Um, you will see it stop less frequently now that it uh, has two sides to eject uh, minerals clear of. In fact, it might not stop at all. getting down there pretty quick. I told you the first hole was rough. Um, what else can go wrong? Uh, if it gets shot up, as I said, there's a projector button on the back. Um, if you run out of ice, you put more in. Um, sometimes it gets stuck for dumb reasons. Like, you'll see an error that just doesn't make sense, like it's full when it's not full or whatever. And you just you just hit continue job. Um, that also is where that mysterious button number seven, the start button, can come in handy. Because sometimes when it's stuck, it's just, ah, uh, it's unloading one time here. Sometimes it's when it's stuck, it's just as easy as, as popping the start button and it breaks it out of its robot-induced coma. Alright, we're almost...
almost to the end of this video. I mean, this is basically how Path Auto Miner works. Um, zero G is basically the same. Um, and again, you can be really precise uh, with that flying portion. Um, I tend to use, again, this matrix of high altitude, low altitude approach, north, south, east, west. I get a little more specific and be like, you know, all the points of the compass. Um, but it, basically, as long as I maintain that rule in my head and communicate it to people, um, you know, north, south, east, west, high, low gives me eight options for approach. Uh, and I typically never more run more than three miners, so that's plenty good. There we go. So there, there's the difference in our depth from when I, we uh, tweaked with the settings. Uh, another thing that's nice to know, I should show you this, is it's probably not quite full. I bet you it's getting close. No, it's full. Or is it? No, it's not quite full. It just has its own idea of the order of things. That's going to catch the silicon of that one. So um, you can actually, we're going to interrupt this beautiful thing. We hit two to stop the job. And then we can actually uh, go down to the menu here see uh, fly uh, to home position, fly to job position. So if for whatever reason, and I do this a lot when there's a precious mineral I need badly, and it's going to take it half a week to get a full uh, load of it, and I'm just like, come on, give me my gold, give me my, my uranium, or whatever, I will uh, pop this fly to home position and uh, let it take me there. So watch it fly itself. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, so at any time you can tell it to fly to the job site or fly to home. Uh, even in that menu, there's a you know simulate full, uh, but that's pretty much the same as fly to home. And you can be down in the bottom of the hole and tell it fly to home. It still knows how to get out safely, cleanly, and take you back home. Uh, very important to remember not to uh, build new things or park big things in its flight path. <laughs> We've had that happen a few times. And again, if I didn't have the, the two sorter system, you know, every so many trips I'd have to chuck some more ice in there because it'll it'll be like a low on hydrogen. Um, but with this two sorter system, it's beautiful. As long as my base has a bunch of ice, which it usually does, because guess what? I auto mined that too. Uh, then it's all set. So cool, there is a load of cobalt going in that'll clog up my refineries for days. Um, I think that's basically all there is to it. These batteries are charging a little slower than I would have liked. Um, remember to turn the sorters and ejectors off if you want to keep the minerals as well as change that setting uh, on ejectors. And you're pretty much good to go. This has been Expressman. This is Space Engineers. This is the awesomeness that is Practical Solutions, Inc. Best faction in the game. Uh, I'll put a link to our Discord in the video. And uh, yeah, that is Path, o Path Auto Miner, Pam, and Debbie.